to say something. Yo. All right. Yo. Lift, lift the mic up. Just uh, you want to be close as you can. Okay. Yo. And make sure you talk loud. Yo. Yeah. Make sure the interview. Mic check. You'll be able to hear. Cool. Okay. Uh, literally is no pressure. I'm your host, Bangum Bug, and we got a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Mike the model from New York City. I'm out here. Okay. Shout out to Bangum for having me. That's what's up. Okay, Mike the model. So I guess kind of like give me a little bit of detail on what you do and what you're trying to accomplish in the industry. Well, I used to rap, but now I don't longer rap. I fell back from that. Now I'm modeling for black owned clothing. So my goal is to become a male model for black owned clothing, a no male model. That's my goal. Okay, so what's your ethnicity? You look like I'm Puerto Rican, Rican and black. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, so uh, you from New York, so like, I guess tell me like, how was it growing up in that area? Well, I grew up in the projects. It was rough. Like, you know, a lot of drug dealers, gang members. So it was rough growing up in New York. So, you know, but you know, when you grow up in the hood, you get, you know, either you be a part of it or you just not. So. I know New York, they got some of the biggest rags I didn't, I didn't ever <sighs> seen. And I remember it was a video, it was a video, it's like a group of people that go around with dogs, they train to catch rats, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. they said they not putting no den in like the rat population, but I guess it's just something they like to do. Yeah, we got rats as big as cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, did you go with both your parents? Nah, just my mom's. So, do you got a relationship with your dad or like? Nah, I never met him. He passed away in 2018. 2008, but I never met him, so. Okay. You know, my mom's just raised me. My mom was in the streets. Okay, so do you know his side of the family or you yeah. nothing like that? I know a couple of them, but I really don't talk to them because it's like, I don't know y'all. But my mom starts to reach out, but I'm like, nah, I'm good. Okay, so what about your mom, y'all? Real close? Yeah, 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 real close. Okay, so, um... Okay, so I guess give me the most traumatic experience you had as a child. Most traumatic? Yeah. Uh, I could basically say like, you know, mom's telling you my pops is coming over for Christmas, my birthdays, he never showing up. So it was just like, you know, getting sold dreams that never came true. So as a kid, that messes up you, messes you up mentally. So. Yeah. You know, you see like the movies where the kids be sitting by the window, like <laughs> that shit is sad as hell, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait on your dad to come through. Boy, he never come. Okay, so uh, what would you say your biggest blessing and your biggest lesson in life so far? My biggest blessing, I could say was leaving New York was my biggest blessing. Because once I came to Atlanta, I got presented with so many opportunities. My biggest blessing was being, uh, my biggest lesson was being around the wrong people. Being around the wrong people, you know, I got incarcerated, I do some time. But that was my biggest lesson to stop being loyal to disloyal people. Well, you know I'm gonna ask since you brought that. So what was you locked up for? Assault and battery and gang affiliation. But so it's like, just being around the wrong people. At first I, at first I caught two felonies for robbery, but then the case got dismissed because the victim never came to court. But then the second one, I really did some time for the fight I had. Okay, so what was it like being locked up? Was it like, was it depressing? Or, you know, some uh, you know, some people, they sound happy as hell when they be in there. So how was it? When that shit is not easy. Well, it's like, when you gang affiliated, it's different. They put you in the opposite gang that you are in the cell. So, like, if you're a blood, they're going to put you a Crips. If you're a Crips, they're going to put you with blood. That's how dangerous it is. Yeah, it is. Like, that's how the COs are so, like, the COs, I was locked up in Virginia. The yeah. COs are racist. Yeah. So they was like, oh, we'll just put them in there, let them kill each other. So that's how the, the COs, you know. I'm saying, but it seemed like the prisoners would catch on to what they doing and that should make them get along. Nah. But they just was like, fuck it. Nah. I'm going to do what they trying yeah, to do. Yeah, like, it's not, it's not easy. Like, I don't understand. I always talk about that on Facebook, how people brag about jail. Because being in there is not easy and it's not cool. So it's like, why well, would you brag about that? Some people love that shit. And I don't know how. Yeah, some people love that uh, that selling crack lifestyle. They they, they feel like you a bitch if you don't do it. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, so it's just I guess another addiction, man. 
So do you feel like fear is stronger than love and why? Yeah, I feel like fear is stronger than love. I seen a video that Tupac said that. It was a video I watched with Tupac on, um, when he was like, trust nobody. Fear is stronger than love. Because he said um, all the love he gave didn't mean nothing when it came to fear. Yeah. So I, I felt that because I feel like if people uh, fear you, they're not going to love you because they're so afraid of you. So it is two different ways to go about that. Yeah, but they want they not gonna fuck you over if they know you Yeah, yeah, you. yeah, that is true. Okay, so have you had to cut off a family member or a friend and if so why? Yeah, I had to. Well basically they cut me off because I was running the streets and a lot of my family members didn't get along with that. So it's like but yeah I cut a couple family members off like if fam I feel like family members are not supportive then it's like I don't need you in my life, family or not. You're not gonna support me. It's like what you're doing around me. So, do do you support anybody in your family? Of that's... course, of course. I support my brother, my sister. I support my mom. I support anybody, even if I don't know you. If I see you doing something positive, I'm gonna support you, whether I know you or not. So, I just like people that's I like you know hustlers and go getters. Okay, so since you like uh, biracial, like, did you have a hard time like trying to identify with either side or? <laughs> Nah, yeah, yeah. I had a hard time in school, cause you know, everybody was calling me white and stuff, cause I'm light skin. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was hard. Well, okay. So do you feel like being light skin? Do you feel like is you get treated better than dark skin blacks? Nah, 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 really. I get treated the same. Like, like as far as like the police, they don't care. Yeah. They, they like. So I say I was growing up in the projects. If you here, they gonna treat you like they don't care. No matter if you light skin, dark skin, brown skin, they don't care. They go treat you like they treat everybody else. But as far as like, I really don't get into the light skin and dark skin thing because it's like we all grew up together. So it's like I never really had a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I bring it up because, you know, yeah. you hear celebrities like Dave Chappelle say yeah. he got treated different. A lot of people yeah. get treated different, so you yeah. never know. Yeah, facts. Okay, so um, who would you say the most impactful person in your life? I say my mom's, because no matter what I go through, personally, she'll always hit me out and never judge me. So I could say my mom's. Okay, so what's something you could never forgive and something you will never forgive? Something I can never forgive is like a friend doing me wrong. Like, and something I can never forget is like stuff I've been through in my past. So, so could you forgive a guy for messing with your girl? Nah. Nah, because it's like, we have a bro code. It's like, we don't deal with each other's girlfriends or exes. Because I never know how you feel about your ex, so why would I go try to, you know, smash your ex? But I always look at it like, a woman know that's your friend. Yeah. And if she still, like, go ahead and do it, like, why be mad at your home, boy? Nah, you're right, though. willing to just you're do right. it like that. Somebody told me in the past, a nigga gonna be a nigga. Yeah. A nigga uh, ain't turned down a pussy. But, yeah, if that's your girl and she know that's your homie, yeah, that's foul. Because your, like, your, homeboy, your homeboy might kill somebody for you. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So it's like he, he still would kill somebody, but he just don't have to fuck that hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. Yeah, you got to be mad at the... I'll never get mad at a dude if I try to get on my girl. Yeah. I will get mad at my girl on how she responds because that's yeah, how you got to look at you know, it. Yeah. yeah, if she don't let you know, then you know that's not the one for you. Okay, uh, well, you know, sometimes some if some women know you violent and crazy, they won't <laughs> tell you because they, they know you might yeah, react. I know to he's going to wall out if I tell him. So sometimes they be good enough, <laughs> way. Okay, so what would you say the mo most hurtful thing that has been said to you? The most hurtful thing that's ever been said to me? Uh, that's deep. That's deep. Um, I don't know. Probably like, I don't know. I don't know how to say, how to explain that because it's I've been through so much. So the most hurtful thing, probably like a girl cheating on me or like like a friend. I found a friend killed another friend, something like that. I, I don't know. That's deep. That's a deep question. Okay, so has a woman ever said she don't love you anymore? Yeah. And like, yeah. okay, so how did you take it? Did you believe it or like what went through your mind? Like, like. 
my, my, me and my ex is going through problems. She said that, but it's just like, if you know, if you going through, like, your relationship ain't going away, and, and it's a like, chick tell you, I don't love you no more. It's like, you think like, damn, what did I do to make her not love me no more? Or, you know, something like that. I be feeling like she ain't never loved me in the, in the first, first place. place. Yeah, yeah it be like that sometimes. If she could tell you that after you've been loyal and stuff, then it's like, you always felt like that. You it, just was waiting for the right time to say it. And you know what's something good to do? Look up to like, uh, you know, it's books on how to tell somebody lying. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know one of them is they'll look off in a different direction. Wow. And I remember I asked this girl, I was like, I looked in the face, I was like, you love me? She just turned off and then looked back at me. I started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to like research yeah, stuff yeah. like that and learn a little bit like about psychology. Like, yeah. It'll help you deal with these women. Okay, so um, have you ever been depressed and like, what would you say the, the best way to deal with it? I've been depressed, and the best way to deal with depression is to vent for some vent to somebody. That's to listen to it. Vent to somebody who give you advice and let them know, yo, bro, this one I'm going through. I need some advice. That's the best way to. Cause I used to drink, and I thought drinking would help my depression. It didn't. It only made it worse. So, like, do you smoke? No. Nah. Do you smoke? Okay. So, um, have you ever been abused or abused a female? Nah, I don't hit women. I can't do that. So no woman that hit you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, I went through some shit like that with my ex. She was real. She's one of them chicks that get mad and want to throw shit at you. Yeah. So it was like, it's it's a video on you. Well, it's Instagram with this what is this Asian lady. Every time her husband say something, she kick off her shit. <laughs> yeah. and throw shit. Yeah, that shit is funny. But yeah, you have to stop that shit early, man. Cause yeah. if you don't, they they gonna keep. Yeah, and they gonna feel like it's okay to do that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what would you say your regrets are in life and uh, have you had a regret in your career so far? Um, a regret in my life is just, I could say, dealing with certain people. No one is a bad situation, but my loyalty is like, you know what? I'm going to just do it anyway. So that's one thing I regret, saying yes to things I should have said no. Give me an example. Like, basically, like, doing things with people that I thought was my friends, like running the streets, doing stuff with friends that I thought was really my friends, and I get in a situation, and then I'm like, damn, these are really not my friends. Okay, uh, okay, what do you fear uh, losing the most? My life. My life and my freedom. The most, I'll say my life. The, my life. Because freedom, you might lose that and you go get it back, but life... Once you die, ain't no coming back. Okay, uh, what's what's something you can't live without? Something I can't live without? I can honestly say, shit, family. Mom, sister, brother. Okay, um, if a, if a female, uh, okay, if a female watches her ex's social media, yeah. and like, like, how do you feel about that? You feel like that's a red flag or what? Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, if you don't want your ex, why are you still on his page? Why are you still watching what he's doing? If a chick does that, that means she's not over her ex. That's all that means. That time, them hoes still be fucking on me. Yeah, man. you never know. When they get the chance to. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you feel like the one of the dumbest things you ever did, besides getting locked up? The, one of the dumbest things I ever did was like, like in New York City, hop the train. Like they got the turnstile, you gotta pay. It's like a cop was there, but I had no change on me. But I had money in my pocket. I hopped the ch I hopped the turnstile. He gave me a ticket for two hundred dollars. Damn. Yeah, but I had money in my pocket to pay for a card, and I didn't want to pay. I just hopped it, and the cop called me. That was the dumbest shit ever. Like I should have just paid for it. He was in plain clothes, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he was a detective in plain clothes. Okay, so um, what would you say the scariest moment in your life? In uh, okay, the person you thought of when when it happened. The most scariest time of my life yeah. was when I almost died. That was like I can't lie, that was scary. When I almost got killed in New York. Okay, so uh, okay, what's been the craziest thing you've been talking to doing? 
Damn. Um, I want to answer that. The most craziest thing I ever been talked into doing was like, I don't think I should say this, but I, I did uh, a lot of things that um, I did in the street that my friends was like, "Yo, do this," and I should have said no. But okay, I got I got to answer the obvious. What does the teardrop mean on your face? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, that's a crazy question. Um, yeah, I got this a couple years ago. But, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Okay, we're going to get into some stuff that was on the internet. The first yeah. thing I want to talk about, did you see 42 Doug when he tongue-kissed his son and neck? I almost threw up, man, when I seen this. Yeah, that was bugged out. What, what was your thoughts on it when you like, seen it? Why would you do that? There's just certain things you don't do, like... Like, if you got a son, I know that's your son, but kissing on him on his lips and stuff like that, like, that's just, I feel like that's, nah, that's too much. When he did that, I'm like, come on, son, like, nah. He he had a song where he was saying he sucked dick or something, and then the yeah. song got changed. Yeah. So. Yeah, these rappers be wild. <laughs> these rappers be wild. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't that know what they be doing behind closed doors. Okay, uh, this um, I don't know if you had to deal with like yeah. when you was in and when you was out. Like, you ever had somebody in jail and they call you too fucking much, man? <laughs> like on the phone? Yeah, they just call you like some of them be having to get cell phones. Oh yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Like, I never had that because I never had access to cell phones. But I seen other inmates that had cell phones and they be blinging off all night, like. And then they'd be like, damn, you call me more when I'm locked up than I'm home. Yeah. So I used to, I never understood that how you get more, like, support in there than when you're out. Yeah, I never I don't understood even, that. I don't even really like talking to bitches every day, so mm, nah. I definitely don't want no nigga calling me every day. Yeah. Okay, um, have you ever seen this, like, a woman who will brag about, like, I guess finessing a man, but it actually make her look bad. Yeah, like she was saying, all the time. I you and, yeah, and like all oh, this man, niggas like, broke. Man. This niggas broke, taking me out on dates. Yeah, women nowadays love doing that. I feel like Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion brainwashed them to just use men for money. So I'll be always looking on Facebook, seeing chicks bragging about that. How they got a man for his bread, but that only makes you look broke. Because if you don't, if you have your own money, you don't gotta use a man for his money. Okay, so I guess, I don't know, you, you seen that uh, interview with Wack and 6 ix 9 <laughs> That shit was like three hours. I, I checked it out, but, uh, okay, what's, I mean, Wack basically saying like 6 ix 9 really a civilian, so he don't really see him as a snitch. But he still feel like he gangster. He trying to c oh, compare God. himself to John Gotti. So oh, what, what's your thoughts on it? I just feel like, first off, it's like, first off, 6 ix 9 like, See, I know him as Danny. I don't know him as 6 ix 9 I know him as Danny growing up in New York. So it's like, once you put yourself with gang affiliates, you get put in that category. Ain't no like, oh, I'm, I'm nothing. Because you want to run around red and blue flags, you're going to get looked at as a, as a blood or a crip. Oh, you used to know him when he was, yeah. when he was up there? Yeah. And how was he act? Like, how he used to act? Like, when he, he was just a comedian. Like, one of them people that just make videos, funny viral videos on Instagram and social media, he was that type of dude. But I think when he jumped, bumped into Jim Jones, that's what he got put on the rap game. When he bumped into Jim Jones, and he put him on. Jim Jones got him put on with the music. And all of a sudden, he's a super blood. I'm just like, what the fuck? Mm. That shit is funny. Okay, so what's your thoughts on the baby comments? Um, oh. He would say, if you didn't show up today with HIV <laughs> and AIDS, any, any of the deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks. Put your cell phone light in the air. No. Ladies, if your pussy smell like water, put your cell phone light in the air. Fellas, if you ain't sucking dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone light in the air. So what's, what's your thoughts? Yo, on? when I see that shit, I'm like, yo, bro, you wild out, son. This is some shit you should keep to yourself. He shouldn't have never said that. I heard he got kicked out of like eight festivals for that. But like he should never got in front of the whole world on the stage saying stuff like that. He should have kept it to himself. But you know, that's, that sounds like something common people say. Yeah. Like, 
But, yeah, but you don't just get on stage like, yo, if you don't suck dick, put your thumb up. Like, you don't do shit like that because, you know, the gay community is sensitive. So you got to take that shit to another level. So he should have just never said that shit. Okay, I gotta bring this up too. Okay, yeah. they, they, I hear like when people are models, like, yeah. I have, matter of fact, this comedian was saying he had a home while he was modeling, but he said he had the quicks because so many fags was like coming on to him. So, like, what's your experience with modeling so far? Well, gay, gays do run the fashion industry, and I had a couple gay fashion designers that want me to model for them and they shows, but I was like, no, I don't get down like that. Like, I let them know off rip, like, listen, that's not my cup of tea. Whatever you got going on, that's cool, but nah, I'm good. I mean, so what What do they say? They be like, um, they hit me up on Facebook and be like, how you doing? My name is such and such. I would love for you to model my clothes. But then, like, I show my girl, like, I look at their profile, be like, nah, I'm not doing that. Nah. I'll be like, nah, I'm good. I just hit them back, I'm good. But you'll have, a, as a male model, you'll have a lot of gay men try to recruit you into modeling in their clothes. But I'm like, nah, I'm good. So do you feel like you would get farther if you was gay, since there's so uh, many gays in there? It is. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I can't comment on it because, you know, I ain't no, I don't get down like that. But it's like, if that's how dudes get down, then that's how they get down. I think I get more respect because I'm real with my model in life. I'm real. I keep it 100. But yeah, I had a couple dudes try to inbox me on some funny shit, but I'm like, blocked. Yeah, I, I mean, most of the time, uh, if a dude hits you up, like, on some friend shit, they seem gay anyway. You ain't even talking about yeah, no business. Yeah, we ain't talking about business. It's like... Yeah, that's a red flag. Right. <laughs> okay, um, it was a video of some women twerking at a funeral. Oh, so, like, I, I guess... See. So, what's, like, one of the weirdest things you didn't seen at a funeral? Twerking at a funeral, that is, I never seen no shit like that at a funeral though, like, cause people depressed at a funeral, but who just, like, I'ma just twerk and make everybody feel better, like, that's just, that's just crazy. The weirdest thing I ever seen at a funeral was like, somebody kissed the body while I was in the casket, like, somebody, like. A woman or a guy? A guy. He kissed a woman? Yeah. That's a little weird. Yeah, so I'm like. <laughs> just, Ain't nobody say nothing? Nah, they just look like, what the fuck? Like, cause just, just a kiss of, like, I'ma just kiss the body. Like, that was some weird shit. Okay, so have you ever caught a guy at a female house you were smashing? Like, you pulled up too early or something and the dude was over there. Um, not catching smashing, but like, when I was younger, I used to see friends I used to chill with at girls I was messing with houses. I'd be like, what? What's good, yo, bro? Like, the hell? I, that shit is weird, though. Like, <laughs> to see a dude you chill with at a crib with a chick you smashing. So it's like, either do you tell your homie you're smashing or you just look like, yo, the fuck? I, I didn't have bitches. Like, one, it was one time I went over there and I, it was a car park. Mm. So I called, I said, hey, you by yourself? So I guess the dude finished fucking her. And like two mm. minutes later, he ran out the house like oh, fast. Shit. <laughs> shit. And then I just waited, it, waited on my turn here. And I went Damn. in and just smashed <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so uh, matter of fact, have you ever been like robbed or anybody ever stole something from you before? Yeah, I've been robbed. And how, how did that go? Like, that shit is crazy. It was at nighttime, they caught you. Come to like him. Because I had a chain on. I was walking through a neighborhood I wasn't supposed to. Had a chain on. So a dude put like a gun on me. I wanted to take my chain off. So, you know, shit got ugly from there. Oh, y'all got in a fight? Mm, we ain't in a fight. He pistol with me. So Damn. I took my chain off. But it's like, when you when you in the hood, you shine in somebody else's hood. I was young and stupid. People told me I'd be walking around with jewelry like that. But I ain't learned. But... Shit got ugly. Yeah, y'all would've gave that up. Yeah. They, they catch you lagging, because you, even if you got your shit, you got to yeah. get, you gotta get it out, so. Yeah. You gotta give it up, man. Fact. So, um, okay, if, if a woman's not answering her phone, or she take a while to answer a text back, yeah. is that a red flag for you? If she not at work? Yeah, that's a red flag. Because it's like, if you not at work, it's like, you call a chick, and she always answer. And then 
you call her and she don't answer, but then she texts you back four hours later, like, oh, my bad. It's like, you go like, what the fuck? You gotta think like, what are you doing that? Cause females always got their phone in their hand. Yeah. Always. So it's like, either you just watching me bling you up or you just busy doing you and you don't wanna answer the phone. So that is kind of a red flag. I, I had a chick um, do that and she used to call me at work all the time. Mm -hmm. So when she started going out, doing her little thing, mm -hmm. I would call her and she asked me why I was calling her. I'm like, bitch, you called me while I left at work? Mo is just like, <laughs> they be trying no to sense. talk to you stupid as hell. That makes like, no sense. I already know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so it was it was a dad, he seen his pregnant ex-wife mm -hmm. um, at his son's soccer game. Mm. And she was with her boyfriend and he killed both of them. Oh shit. So like, what was like, like your worst reaction to like an ex that you might have seen like out in public <clears throat> like like to see my ex with another dude it's like it depends on how the relationship fell out if I had feelings with her I'd be just looking tight like damn but then it's like hey it is what it is like if a dude could take your girl that was never your girl that's how I was taught man. So it's like, you can't get mad if you see another dude with your ex, because that's your ex, just go find a chick that's better. Yeah, I just, they, you just had to look at it and be like, oh, well. Like, all right, yo, good looking, that's your you problem now. It. Okay, what's, what's one of your worst experiences you had on the first date? My worst experience on the first date? Shit. <laughs> um, I could say a chick being on her phone. Like, if I take her on a date and I'm trying to get to know you, is log out of Facebook and Instagram. That's the worst when you're trying to get to know a chick and then she's on the phone. Like, it depends. If I know I'm a fuck still, yeah. I ain't gonna be tripping. But yeah. if she acting like I'm not gonna fuck, then yeah. I yeah, she just that's like be a problem. talking to you like, yeah, that <laughs> shit is crazy. Okay, so uh, have you ever been jumped before and like why? Yeah, of course. I've been jumped. You know, like I said, being in the wrong hood. I was walking through the wrong hood flagging and people didn't like that. So I had to fight like three dudes. That shit was crazy. You know, I know this song. Like, I remember I, I watched this. It was like a documentary about gangs. I don't know if it is like Latin mm -hmm. people. It's like they they walk through neighborhoods like on purpose. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that's about. Like, with no gun or nothing, just <laughs> ripping they shit. I don't know why don't they do know. that. I don't know. <laughs> that shit is crazy. Yeah, that he is crazy. <laughs> Okay, uh, have you ever seen somebody like overreact because they didn't get a refund? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> did you try yeah. to did you try to calm them down or you just nah, I'll just mind my business. Especially when um when that, that, that spicy chicken sandwich came out from Popeyes and yeah. everybody in the world was wilding out. Yeah. That shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. I think one one of the times I seen it was a guy I was in um it was a pizza place mm. and the guy wanted a refund but you know he he paid with his card yeah. so he, she was like yeah it's gonna take a few days to come back on your like, this nigga <laughs> bug I, I wanted to get a nigga twenty dollars <laughs> but I just left I was yeah. like Fuck it. but he was like damn they're about to fight the girl over the little what, however much it was that's crazy but it wasn't no more than twenty dollars though yeah it's bugged up okay so um. I guess tell us like um, I guess on on the modeling how if I wanted to model like how would I get started and like what's like what do I need to do to get started? Basically, like work on your poses, taking pictures. Like if you a photogenic person, it'd be perfect for you. Cause it's not hard. I used to think it was hard until I started doing it. It's really not hard. You just gotta dress like have a matching outfit on, have a nice scenery. Basically, the main thing you need is a background because people gonna see it, look at what you're wearing, and they gonna look at the background of the picture to see where you're at. So if you want to start, you just get a nice outfit and get a dope scenery. That's the best way to start. Okay, and so what's what's the money like? Um, what was your first check like or the biggest check you got for modeling? See, I ain't really get to that yet. I'm just freelancing on my own. But I have some clothing lines that'll hit me up and pay me to be in their clothes. Like a buck fifty, two hundred. It depends. It depends. Okay, so tell the people how they can get in touch with you and um I guess your social media and all that. My Instagram is Mike the Model M I K E T H A Model eighty eight. Twitter, the same thing, Mike the Model eighty eight. Facebook hashtag Mike the Model eighty eight. 
And you could just catch you out here in Atlanta. I'm running around every day. All right, I guess we're going to get into the next interview. And uh, I guess I'm going to play another song before we uh, 